Praise the Lord from whom all blessings flow. My name is Sean Henry Scott Sr. Today is 10-24-2020. 10-24-2020. You know, you practice that on and on before you come online and you still mess it up. That's the, that's the human in this. But anyway, today is our Sabbath word. Um, we're continuing on with the series Set Free. A series that the Lord had placed me on a couple weeks ago. Just to share the word of the living God. In these times that we're living in to help people understand that it is his desire, his will, that we be free. Um, we know according to the scriptures in the gospel according to John 8, 36, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So I pray in the name of Jesus that through this series that anybody that may come across this, stumble across it, watch it, hear it, will understand <clears throat> what the Spirit is saying to us, the church. Once again, today is our Sabbath word. We come before you two times in the calendar week on our ministry. Once on the Sabbath and then again on the midweek miracle sermon to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, if you ever want to get in contact with our ministry, feel free to call us at 614-847-2057 or by way of the internet at www.teamjesususa.com. We'll do our very best to get back in contact with you and, and do whatever it is God would have us do in uh, agreement. Let us pray. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank and praise you, Father God, for it is written in your word that if we would be faithful over a few things, you would make us ruler over many, Father God. My only and true desire, Father God, is to do your complete and perfect will, according to Isaiah 43.10, which you have called me to, Lord Jesus. You've given us power to be witnesses, Father God, in this world we're living in today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Folks are, just like you said, Lord Jesus, sheep uh, that, that, that are gone astray, Lord Jesus, looking for peace, love, happiness, and joy, and anything and everything else but you, Father God. I just thank you for this platform to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, Father God, that they will hear the word of the living God in turn, Father God, and increase their faith, because we know that faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of the living God. Now allow the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart to be pleasing in your sight, Father God. Have your will and your way, in Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. We'll continue on, like I said, with this series. This is the, the third part uh, in this series, Set Free. Um, I'm going to go into the Lord directs me otherwise. We find ourselves still in Deuteronomy 28. Because Deuteronomy 28 has, <laughs> uh, let's see here, 60, 68 verses of scripture. So, you know, last week we got started and we got to 13. So this is uh, the, the heading of my Bible and the heading of the day's uh, particular sermon is speaking about the wrath of God. One thing that we have to be mindful of as believers, and that we, we need to fearfully serve our God, knowing that uh, what he is capable of, and will it really, in, in, in all honesty, I fear... God, but at the same time, I fear myself not adhering to what the Lord is speaking and telling me to do, because obedience is so important, and, and I've just been meditating and, and interceding in my spirit and my soul for people who I personally know who are not in, walking in complete obedience for the Lord. The Lord keep bringing them to my, to my mind, and, and I don't know if it, it, I'm supposed to call them right now or just continue to pray and intercede for them, because there are things that people are believing God for including their life and life eternal, that, that they're just not adhering to. You know, the sound, the Bible in Isaiah talks about the sound is going out. His word will not return unto him void. We need to continue to preach and stand on the gospel of Jesus Christ. God is not geographically bound by anything in this present world we live in. And for some reason or another, people try to make our God like, you know, this world, and he's not. But anyway, we're going to get into the scripture. Um, this set free series is based off the fact of simply what it says. There are people that are in bondage to their fears of this world. And I believe God, how always, always, I'm giving you the answer for the hope that's in me. We start out the series in saying, In knowing who Jesus Christ was, is, and is to come, I have learned to view the Bible in, different, in a different context to increase my faith. There are different kinds of bondages 
and different levels of freedom depending on your faith, obedience, and submission to the word of God. And we already read how if the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So the first form of freedom in the Bible began with God sending Moses to deliver his chosen people from bondage. And honestly, in my spirit, um, I believe that Adam and Eve experienced a, a, a a form of freedom because um, they could have God could have struck them down and, and, and begun again but he allowed them to go out into the world and continue on what he had started in them so we find ourselves in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 28 and we're going to read again 13 and we're going to go from there we stopped at 13 last week or on our last time speaking which was our midweek miracle sermon 13 and 28 chapter <coughs> excuse me, of Deuteronomy says, And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. There are times in my walk and my journey where I found myself not above. I was under situations, I was under circumstances, I was going through things, and it seemed like the taskmaster or whatever was oppressing me was on top of me. In those times, what I had realized is like what Joseph probably had realized when he was in the pit. You know, and, and even Job, <clears throat> when he found himself in the situation he was in, there will be times in this journey, in this walk, where your faith will be questioned. <clears throat> And what you need to do is stand strong, knowing that God said he would never leave you, nor would he forsake you. So you need to understand, even if you find yourself, the scripture said, the Lord shall make thee the head, not the tail, and, and above only. If you find yourself in a position where you're underneath something, or you're going through something where it feels like something is on top of you, God is, is making you, he's proving you, he's pruning you to bear much more fruit. This is not the time to give up. This is time to praise God that he's chosen you to be used to be glorified. So he could be glorified through you, excuse me. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. Now, I hear the Holy Spirit speaking that there are those that <clears throat> go through these type of things, and they stay down. This is dangerous. Because you stay, if you stay in that humble, that position, when God is trying to exalt you, you will get comfortable with the circumstances and the situation that you're not meant to be comfortable in. You're in that position only for a season, if you have to go through it. Read about it in Job, and once again, I talked about Joseph. They, Joseph did not stay in the pit. He did not stay in the jail. There were these were seasonal things. Job didn't go through his. There's, there, I believe there's 42 uh, uh, scripture verses, chapters, but he did not stay in that, that broken position for, for a long time. So we need to understand that you're not to get comfortable. Jonah, when he was in the well, you don't, you don't make the well comfortable. So you need to understand that I'm going through this so that God can do what he has to do in me to, to, so that he can be glorified. So when people see me going through this, they was like, oh, their God is God because look how God brought them out. And the Lord shall make thee head and not the tail, and shall be above only. And thou shalt not be beneath, if thou, listen to this, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. So he, he, we never take our eyes off Jesus, off the word of the living God. No matter what we experience or go through in this life, Jesus Christ has to remain their priority in the reasoning in the in the in, in our in our out. He has to. It doesn't change. Fourteen. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. And like I was just talking about how there are times when we go through things, we look for other ways out. Well since God didn't bless me the way I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and get a loan or I'm going to go ahead and do this, and I'm going to, I mean, there, you know, I've, I've ministered and prayed with women who've, who've put themselves in compromising positions with men, 
because the man was willing to pay some bills or do something for him they felt like God wasn't doing fast enough that's a dangerous thing to do like the scripture just says it says don't go to the right hand or to the left hand to go after other gods to serve them so basically what you're doing is you're making something else your God because you have lost faith in God that's why we're talking about being set free somebody will hear this and realize they've done this and repent and return to the Lord and get back in the place where God desires for them to be. We spoke on it before last week how God will not bless you and add sorrow with it. So when there is sorrow attached to what you have called a blessing, it's not from God. It's from the mother of some small G's because you have turned to serve them. 15 in Deuteronomy chapter 28. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do. Now, observing and doing is two different things. We observe the scripture by reading the scripture. But we, we read it to gain faith because faith comes by hearing. To gain faith, to do it because faith without works is dead. So we're not reading it just so we can tell somebody, hey, I read this and I know what that says. No, we're reading it to gain faith to do it. But it shall come to pass that thou wilt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. That's why, you, you know, we, we, we quick to talk about we're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the field, when the praises go up, the blessings come. We're quick to talk about the blessings. But at the same time, we've got to understand the opposite of a bless, blessing is a curse. So if I don't if I don't send praises up, then what? If if I if I'm not blessed in the city, I'm not blessed in the field, then what? I'm a curse. We don't we don't like talking about that. We don't like talking about the, the opposite of the blessing. Because we want to we I believe we think if we don't think about it, if we don't talk about it, even if we're in that position, it's not happening. That's creating a form of godliness. You've created Situations and circumstances where no matter what you do, you're going to be blessed. And that's not the word of the living God. That's not the word of God in any way, shape, or form. The Bible, I hear the Holy Spirit saying that, 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 that wide is the gap and narrow is the way. And few, few find it. Very few find it. It's going to be a remnant that find that, that narrow way of God, his word, for us to follow it and go down. We don't just create our own way. Now, this is why I, 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 I named this the wrath of God because <laughs> we're about to talk about some things from 16 until the Lord tells me to stop concerning what's going to happen to people when they do not listen and do what God has called and created to do. And if you would be honest and earnest about yourself and look, look over your life, you will, you will know, if not you, some people who have failed to some of these things because they just flat out turn their back on God. Verse 16, curse shalt thou be in the city, curse shalt thou be in the field. 17, curse shalt thy baskets in the store. 18, curse shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. 19, cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. So, for the most part, from them three verses of 16, 17, 18, 19, no matter what you do, you're cursed. And you want, go back to 15, but it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken. So, when you do not listen, hearken means listen, unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, listen to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I've commanded this day, all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Because from 15 back to 1, it talked about how blessings will overtake you. Now we're talking about when you do not hearken, listen, to do them, this is what's happening. Verse 20, the Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, rebuke in all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed, and unto thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doings, Whereby, whereby thou hast forsaken me. 21. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee, until he have consumed thee from off the land 
whether thou goest to possess it. Now I believe it's uh, it's important for us to understand that that when when people create their own form of godliness, it's they 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 have rejected the Lord, so they create situations and circumstances where they feel like they're okay and they're still in the favor of God. This is a dangerous place to be. It's almost like a reprobate mind, you know. I don't like to, to, to shed light on this sin only, but this is the best example that I, I, I hear the Holy Spirit giving me. How it is that there are people who have chosen to be either gay or lesbian or homosexual or whatever the case may be. These are obvious sins according to the Bible. We didn't say they was. The Bible said they were. And so when you create your own church based off of what you want to do and how you want to be, and then you go along and acting as if you're going to inherit the same heaven that we're that that, that straight people or, or people who who are uh, abstinence and celibate are going to do. You have created and I, this this is going on. I'm not talking about something that's not happening in 2020. They have their own churches, and I say they. I'm talking about sinners, people who have chosen to sin against God. Was it James 4:17? He didn't know to do good and do it not to him. It is a sin. They have chosen to live a lifestyle. That's anti-Bible, anti-Jesus Christ. And as a result, since they know what the Bible says clearly, and they can't, they, 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 they feel a need to fill that void that they used to have when they was walking with God, with, with their own version of God. So they have, they have churches, they have fellowships, they have choirs. I have no idea what they're preaching because they're not preaching out of this Bible. But they're preaching and they've created their own form. Not just them, but anybody who turns their back on God. Like it says, but it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of thy God to do, to observe, to do, in verse 15, in Deuteronomy 28. So when you decide, I'm not going to do it God's way, I'm going to create my own way. That's what these curses are talking about. Verse 21, the Lord shall make thee the pestilence cleave unto thee until thou have consumed thee from off the land, whether thou goest to possess it. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with a fever and with an inflammation, and with extreme burning, and with the sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue, pursue thee until thou perish. Excuse me. Verse 23. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass. So you will have a form of heaven, but it won't be the heaven that the Bible speaks of that the faithful will inherit. And thou in thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thy feet shall be iron. 24. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. Verse 25. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. Thou shalt be removed into the kingdoms of the earth. 26. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air and unto the beast of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. 27. The Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt and with the emeralds, and with the scab, and with the itch there, whereof thou hast canst not be healed. You know, I, I was hearing something in my spirit as I was reading all these things that's gonna, that, that, goes, that goes on with the non-believer and those who reject God. Right now, as anybody who watched TV at all, they have commercials for people who receive diseases from being homosexual. So instead of me repenting, seeking forgiveness, and living the way the Bible tells me I'm supposed to live to be a blessing, they have created medicine for people who are living in sin to live, to continue living in sin and doing what they want. This is crazy. That's what the scripture is talking about. I'm gonna read, the Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt, and with the emeralds, and with the scab, and with the itch whereof thou cannot be healed. So since there's no healing, they, they created medicine so these folks can live just a little bit longer 
And I'm going to share this example, and, and, and I pray that somebody who hear it will not be a, offended by the fact of this true example. I know of a guy who was in Ohio who was openly homosexual and gay who died from basically sin. He was a younger guy. He was, you know, so from the effects of the sins that he had chosen to live by accepting, saying, okay, I'm gay, this is my lifestyle, you accept it. He was going to church, but he died from HIV and AIDS because of the simple fact that he would not repent. It says, whereof thou canst, canst be, not be healed. There is no, the only healing that there is available for uh, sin diseases is repentance. All you can do is repent. You can repent and then you can receive your healing. You're not going to get your healing if you're going to continue on living in sin. Excuse me. 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness, blindness, and astonishment of heart. When you hear these things, just examine yourself and examine the people that are around you and the things that's going on. You know, those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior and our Lord makes makes Him the Lord of our, the lives that we're living in, the Lord of our choices, the Lord of, our, of the things that we decide to do with, with, with our choices. Those of us, upon making that decision and confessing and repenting and believing, we, we committed our ways to Him. When, when we did that, we realized that there will be benefits based off of His Word that we receive by accepting Him. The opposite of accepting. Now I know who how I was before I did this. Man, I, my, I was going crazy in my mind. My, I was just I had no control over the things that I was thinking of. The fears of the world, the fears of having or not having a job, the fears of, of relation. All these fears, all these things just had me in, in bondage, had me in chains, and had me in bars. This person is trying to get me. You know what they thinking about me. It's just like it's what it says. It says the Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. Two main killers in this world: lack of rest and stress. That's one and two. Those two things will kill you, wipe you out, cause your body to start to shut down. So though that's why it says blindness. You can't see, having eyes and seeing not. Astonishment of heart and with madness. Just thinking craziness. And all you gotta do is watch the news and, and that's madness. <laughs> they tell you one thing is good for you one day, the very next day they tell you the very thing they told you was good for you yesterday will kill you. Madness. And thou shalt grope at, at noonday as the blind grope up in darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. Now I want you to understand this because this this kind of stuff used to confuse me. Biblical prosperity is different from earthly and worldly, worldly prosperity, obviously. Yes, there's millionaires and billionaires and, and people who don't think nothing about Jesus Christ in any way, shape, or form. And they have houses and cars and money and credit and all these things. And people will look at them like, oh, they're prosperous. No, they're not. Because what does it prosper a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? And what will a man give in exchange for his soul? So that very verse of scripture lets us know that biblical prosperity and worldly prosperity is two different types of prosperity. Because if whatever you have that you call yourself prosper, if it's costing you your soul, you're not prosper at all. Because the Bible says, what does it prosper? A man to gain. And people are out here toiling and fighting, trying to gain things that, 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 and they're losing their soul. They're exchanging their soul for these things. And thou shalt grope at noonday as blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. So they're not prospering. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. There is no salvation to the, to the confessed sinner. To the person that turns their back and rejects Jesus Christ. There is no salvation for them. Verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife and another man shall lie with her. 
there's only one way I can give this example. You know, I try not to throw people under the bus or throw shade on anybody, but the truth is the truth. I was married, and my wife decided to turn her back on God, and she simply said to me, said, if we can have an open marriage, we can stay married. And what she, if anybody who don't know what an open marriage is, meaning that I can go and lie with who I want to lie with and be who I want to be with, and you can't do the same, but we're, we're going to still stay married. That's a lie from the pit of hell. That's a lie. That's a lie. When people turn their back on God, that their minds just start imagining all kinds of things, un unseemly and un ungodly things. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and thou shalt not gather the grapes thereof. 31. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from, from before thy face, and thou shalt not be restored to thee. See, now that's why you need to understand the difference, because you say, well, you went through that, and you, you experienced that, but um, the things that the enemy thought he took from me was restored, and is restored. That's the difference between, like I was speaking about Joseph, because if you would look at Joseph, and then any of you look at King David or David, and the things that they experienced, in one light you would think, well, they're being punished, like it was with Job. Job's friends thought Job was being punished, but you need to keep reading, because Joseph, David, and Job was restored. What they went through was for the glory of God, and people would not have paid them as much attention if they had not went through the valley to get to the mountain. They, if you just take a person and they're born and they just get set up on top of the mountain, there's no story to that. There's no context. There's there was nothing. There's nothing to look at. There's there, okay. He was born and he's been rich and he stayed rich and he died rich. There's no. There's no. But when you see a person abased and broke down and going through something and they they keep the faith for to the best of their ability and stand on the word of the living God and you watch God raise that person up and restore them, then that's something that people can relate to. Because the world, the world is filled more with more broken people than there are whole people. That's why we're still here. We are the salt of the earth. It says in verse 31, Thine ox shall be slain before thy eyes, thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face, and thou shalt not be restored to thee. We get, we get restored. So that's the difference between a believer and a non-believer. Is When we go through things, we're going to we're gonna be get restored. Thy sheep shall be given unto thy enemies, and thou shalt have none to rescue them. 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and, and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thy land. Excuse me, in thy hand. 33. The fruit of the land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed away. Now, we're at verse 33. So, from 15 to 33, this Bible has been speaking on what happens and, and are speaking about the fruits of disobedience. So basically, 1 through 14, 1 through 13, God was letting us know what kind of a life we can experience with Him. But it seems to be, as we read on, and I already know because I've always read it, obviously, that the, the rest of this, this chapter is letting us know <clears throat> the curses that come upon the disobedient. So basically what he's letting you know is, look here, you don't want this to happen to you. I try to share people quite often that the reason why we have the written word, the Holy Spirit, churches, apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, and teachers is so that we can be perfected for the work that God has called us to do and we would not have to experience these curses. But when you ignore the word, the Holy Spirit, the preachers, the pastors, the evangelists, the teachers, all these things, this is what you will have. That's why I said when we begun, but it shall come to pass that if thou will not hearken, if you will not hearken to the word, if you will not hearken to the Holy Spirit, if you will not hearken to the apostles, the prophets, the pastors, the, the, the evangelists, the teachers, if you will not hearken to all these, these things that God has put in place to lead you to him for salvation 
and direction. All these things, this is a fruit of disobedience. Verse 34, so, thou, so that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. 35, the Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a sore botch that cannot be healed from the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. 36, the Lord shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation unto neither thou nor thy